What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today we're taking a look at the making of my latest song. This is a song challenge, finally bringing that back and it is a progressive house track. Once again, bringing that back as well. So uh, this started off, so my grandma has this old clock and I've heard it for years and it plays this little melody called the Westminster Chime. And I've, like I said, I've heard it for years and eventually thought, you know what, I should make that into a song and uh, had an idea in mind and ended up, this ended up being one of the rare occasions where I able to get what was in my head pretty much exactly out into the speakers, which almost never happens. And so that was really exciting. And so I'm really pumped with how this came out. So let's jump into, first of all, the intro. The song wastes no time in getting in the melody. And so I started off with this element. It's a uh, built-in virtual instrument in Logic. And that's got some nice reverb on it. And a bit of EQ cutting a bit of low end and boosting a bit of top end. With that, got a sub. Providing a bit of low end and filling it out. And then a pad. It's a fairly simple element and that's panned to the left slightly to make room for another pad. This one panned slightly to the right. Both of these are massive patches. So when you add the bass, then you got the pluck, I mean the uh, bell element. And then finally, this. Which this started off, it was a, a serum patch, and I'm only on a demo of serum, so I had to uh, render it down. It was a preset that sim sounded similar to um, a uh, pluck used in a Dead Mouse track. And I just had some reverb on there, and I, of course, I, I just printed that on. And then I have uh, cutting the low end, which that slowly lifts over time, and then uh, goes up pretty dramatically to lead into the next section. And then just completely goes away by the time you get to the second section. And that's what's really providing a lot of the movement in this intro. And uh, keeps it rising in energy is that uh, high cut automation. So a, little, a little lead in. And this is that. And a couple of different uh, saw synths and they've got automation on them. I just uh, stuck a gain plugin on there and then automated up so it fades stuff in. So you got... And then I also got a nice little amount of uh, space reverb on there as well. So it leads into this section. So we got quite a bit more going on here. And this was the first part that I made. And this was the main idea that I had in mind. And it came out in a way that I am really happy with. So we got this first of all. This massive patch, and that is doing most of the heavy lifting. Um, so we have the, the Phantoms patch once again. And of course the bell. We're going to pluck playing chords. That's just an ES2 patch. And then with that... These playing chords playing the same rhythm as the little arpeggiated uh, element. So they complement each other. So each uh, different element over here is playing a different uh, harmony. So as you can, so when you, they're added all to, so they sound weird by themselves, but when added together as a whole, they all harmonize with each other and fill each other in very nicely. So we got this one playing the kind of a bass, bassy part. And then this element, which is another massive patch, and this has um, some reverb on it, a little stereo widener, and LFO tool pumping it subtly to keep it out of the way of the TikTok effect, which I'll get into in a second. 
and then this element. Octave down. And then these are both panned out on either side to add some width and some separation. in the plucks, it all works together very nicely. Everything harmonizes and uh, kind of dances around that main lead. So that's all that. And then we get into the bass and the pads. So first of all, we got the sub again. And these are all uh, massive patches. We got a, a pretty grimy bass. And then layered with that is a second bass, and this is a different patch, and it's processed quite differently, so. I'll play it what it sounded like originally. Just a basic saw bass, and then I've got running through bass amp on the preset Deep, which I've used quite a bit in the past. Some EQ. Use EQ quite a lot to shape sounds, and then finally some distortion. Bring out that grit, so then the two bases are layered. So you end up with a nice thick bass sound, and then finally you add in the sub, and you get... We got all the pads over here, so we've got this one. These two balancing each other out on the stereo spectrum. These are all playing chords, and as you can hear, this one's a bit higher up. And then finally, the thing that's kind of holding the whole thing together is this little TikTok effect right here. We've also heard the same sample on New Year, and then I've got this drenched in reverb. Which... Drops out a bit, drop the high end a bit to transition into the snare build. That is a very, very simple build, and the thing that's doing most of, that's bringing most of the tension is actually the chords used. I used the chords to, um, the chord used, it wants to go back to the root chord of the uh, key that the song is in, and it's um, used to build tension, and so the build can be fairly minimal and of course needs to be fairly minimal because I don't want to have this huge build that leads into this little drop because it's I mean you could barely even call it a drop so we got um the snare with the EQ automation on it to keep it have it start calm and then build and then get more and more high energy and then also the rise with some similar EQ automation on it to keep it subtle at first and then it comes in pretty rapidly. So that way the element doesn't just drop straight in and come out of nowhere. It takes a bit of time to actually come in and also got a boom. So now we get into all of this. So I'm gonna start off with the full loop of that. go back a bit into the arrangement. So we first we've got to get a kick, and this is a Vengeance sample. I was actually part of a pack that comes with Studio One, because that's the DAW I used to use. They had all these Vengeance samples built in, so I just pillaged it for that, which is pretty awesome, and occasionally I'll use them. So we got that. That's tuned to be within the key of the song, 
and I got a bit of EQ and LFO tool on it, so I'll show you what I did with those. So first of all, the without the EQ. Cut a bit of mids and a little bit of high end to make it a little more round and punchy. As you can hear, that, that tail is so long and that was really not working in the track. I needed to be a shorter, more punchy kick. And so got LFO tool and basically used it to shape the kick. So it just fades that out. So and as you can hear, that cleans it up very nicely. And you end up with a much more clean kick. So you got the kick. Then you got a little double on top of that. Just adding a little bit of high end. This main element is actually a loop. If used right, there is no shame in using loops. If it sounds good, it is good. In this case, it's a fairly minimal loop, and so I felt okay about using it. I have a... And that was very much the sound I had in my head, and so when I found this, I had it sitting around in a folder. I knew this would be perfect for this track, so we got the kick in this uh, loop. Man, they're just using it for the sounds it has. Uh, some built-in samples from the drum machine designer that's built in the Logic. Of course, drenched in uh, the space reverb. Fairly simple melody going on here, with also a very simple uh, patch and a couple doubling it up. So I'll play these by themselves here. A lot of the sounds in this whole song are pretty simple, but then when layered together, they uh, create a whole better than the sum of its parts. Got the uh, hi hats. Fairly simple, and then a little element doubling it, and that's got a fair amount of swing on it. And then this little element providing some uh, ambiance here. Layered very subtly in there just to keep it from sounding empty. And also, uh, earlier on, I'll go back. So the arrangement was just about building pieces up, so it starts off just with those few elements. And then, not just adding tracks in and having it build up element by element, but having the elements start off simple and then adding more. So for instance, this little, that little element, it just starts off with a couple of sounds here. Doesn't add it in fully. And then, then adds in all the sounds. And so it not only gets more elements and bigger that way but it also gets a little more more complex and more uh, rhythmic as the as time goes on so it builds it up that way as well then i've got kind of a weird element adding some ambiance once again this is from this random uh free sound effects pack i downloaded years ago really i got reverb another weird reverb some EQ, then a widener, doubler effect. Just adds a nice little bit of ambiance to keep it from being empty. And also got uh, this uh, massive preset with lots of reverb once again. So that all builds. Finally, the melody transitions between the original melody and back of the clock melody. Got a much thinner kick for this little part here. And a riser. And also bring in the bell sound, have it muffled at first and then have the EQ lift. So it starts off, it just transitions it nicely between, instead of just abruptly dropping that sound in here, it transitions it in so it's not an abrupt transition at all. So we got... The same kick and all that, and then we got... 
a lot of the same elements, except now they're pumped with LFO tool and built up a bit differently. So let's go into the final drop, so to speak. <laughs> Same pluck, but a bit quieter because it's serving a different purpose. Let's go to those last percussion elements real quick. First of all, we got a um, just an 808 shaker panda bit with some pretty extreme EQ, just because it needs to be this little thin element, and um, that's got a fair amount of swing on it. And then uh, the clap, which is built from these two elements. So first of all, the snare. Start off like that. Of course, that's way too much for this track, so I uh, did some EQ to make it a little more mid-range heavy. Got rid of a lot of the width. And then have a nice reverb, so when laid with the clap, the snare becomes just uh, a much more minimal element, adding a fair amount of beef and not really being too in the way. Beefing up that clap. So this clap... Not a whole lot of processing on that. The sample was pretty much perfect, so. Way too much low end, and so I just cut a lot of that and then cut a little high end. Make it fit better in the mix. And I believe that it's shifted forward. Yep, it's shifted forward ever so slightly to be a little ahead of the beat. So then with the kick, well, I'll just put it with all the drums here. Not terribly high energy by itself, but then when layered with everything else. And then, and then after that was just a matter of mixing it to get all the sounds to work together as well as possible. So everything from levels adjustment, EQ, compression, panning. And then finally I did some referencing to make sure that the mix was working. So referenced it to a couple of Dead Mouse tracks since this isn't a very much a, a Dead Mouse vein. And um, just to make sure that nothing was too loud, nothing was sticking out ridiculously. The frequency spectrum was sounding about right and uh, compared nicely to it. And once I got that all right, referenced it on a couple different speaker systems. And the track is done. Alrighty, that is it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and if you produce music, found it helpful to your own productions. If you have any feedback you want to give, make sure to leave it in the comments below. And I do a new song on this channel every other Monday. And every time I do a song, I also do a making of video. And the way that's scheduled, you end up with new content from me every single week on Mondays. I'm Gabe, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.